Welcome to our first discussion of rotational dynamics. This is all chapter 12. To the right of our notes, we have in green the four principles we've been working with all semester. And now I get a chance to add the fifth. And this set of general principles will be all that we're going to need to truly understand mechanics. That suggests that this bottom equation, which is the time derivative of the angular momentum, is equal to the sum of all the external torques. But we'll get to that in time. First, we need to understand a few basic concepts. And the first of those is going to be um, center of mass. The idea of center of mass is that um, if we have a bunch of masses, I just made a square, great. What we'd like to know is, let's put some beams between them so it's kind of realistic. What we'd like to know is, is the center of mass in the center, or it's the center of mass someplace else. So um, if we made these all equal, if we made these all equal, mass, 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 This would not have to be the center of mass if it, was, if it wasn't also the center of all the locations. So with all those masses comes how far away did I have to go? So for example, if I took this bottom mass and moved it way, 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 way away, we would expect that um, this mass would shift the location of where all of these uh, masses act. Okay, why would we expect that? First, um, the center of mass is equivalent to the center of gravity. So for any extended object, uh, center of gravity, for any extended object, say just a brick, um, the middle of the brick is actually where the force of gravity would act. And since the center of gravity is the same as the center of mass, coming as no supplies since force is, um, force of gravity is mg, again, mass is involved, um, this, yeah, so the center of gravity, center of mass, and if we extended that mass all the way down to the end of these dotted lines, then when we ask ourselves, where does gravity have to act? Well, it, it's got to take into account this very long arm for that bottom mass. And that may, um, if I may, tip the balance a little bit and move the center of mass towards it even though it's a rigid object with these um, bars between the masses. The other reason I suspect that the center of mass is going to move um, away from the center in this case is the center of mass is the natural axis for an object's rotation. So if you throw something into the air, it will rotate around its center of mass. This goes for batons and, and flags and um, trolls and um, pencils. Oh, you can do that little spinny pencil trick. Uh, as long as we are um, throwing something naturally into the air, 
it'll rotate around its center of mass. When would something not rotate around the center of mass? If I have a rigid and firm axis drilled into the system to force this to spin around its center. So like the axle of a car, um, the center of a large um, Ferris wheel. Um, so things that you want to spin without moving, yeah, you're going to want to anchor it down with an axle. Otherwise, if you hit it, it's going to move and rotate. So how do we find the center of mass? We'll find the center of mass, or a center of mass, by doing what makes sense given what I just said, which is you take a piece, of, a chunk of mass and how far away it is from the origin, one and one, add it to another piece of mass, add it to another piece of mass, R2, add it to that third piece of mass, and its distance from the chosen axis, of, um, in this case, coordinate system. I just gave mass a vector. That is um, kind of funny. Uh, mass is not a vector quantity. Uh, distances. And this goes on um, until you've collected every single piece of mass that you could possibly get. But there's a piece missing now. And the idea is that um, we need to divide all of these little pieces of mass which make up the whole and divide it by the mass of the whole, the mass total. In this fashion, you can um, From, uh, you can just, um, and this is the nice part about the mass total, is it isn't a vector, so it's just adding up all of the masses at the bottom. The rotation of the center of mass, sorry, the location of the center of mass can also be found by, yes, integration, where you add up all of those little masses until you have them all. So let's do a um, quick example. Let's go ahead and do um, something that looks like um, mass one Doing the lines of job of getting things on the center, mass two. And we'll make it a T-shaped uh, mass three. We're gonna let both of these be our length. And now we need to identify a axis for us to do our work about. And I'm going to cheat and choose an easy one. Ah, no, not that. Give me that rod back and the mass at the end of it. What I meant to do was change color, you silly thing. Okay, so I'm going to choose... Um, how about uh, X going out this way and Y being positive that way? So now uh, we can take our simplest definition and break it into two components. So all of my X axis components for the center of mass around X is going to be uh, mass one 
its distance to the center of our origin, mass 2, its distance to the center of the origin, mass 3, its distance to the center of the origin, all over, um, in this case, um, 3m. Let's make a note that Um, in this first attempt, masses are equal. Again, my goal here is just a simple example. Uh, I'll post a more complex example after this lecture. Okay, so back to where we were. I now have to do the y component of our center of mass. And that's going to give me uh, m1 y1 plus m2 y2 plus m3 y3, all that divided by 3m. So let's do some solving. Um, the center of mass and the x direction now is just going to equal um, mass 1 mass 1 which is um, located here, you'll notice in the x direction is at x equals 0. So I'm going to have mass, the first mass, no separation from x. The same thing is going to happen to mass 2 that it is along the y-axis, and therefore there's no distance, so we put zero distance down for it. And then mass 3, which is located a full L away. We divide that by 3m, and we get um, the mass, an L, the mass, and the 3. So the center of mass in the x direction is located at L over 3. Let's do the the R center of mass in the y direction. So Mass 1 has gone up a positive L over 2, while mass 2 has gone a distance of negative L over 2. And then we add in mass 3 which is along the x-axis directly, and therefore the y-axis is 0. And our center of mass for y, then, is going to be um, uh, the mass L over 2 minus the same mass L over 2 over total, 3m. And since the tops um, go away, the center of mass of our system is located at, so R as a vector for the center of mass, is located at x of L over 3, 0. 
So back up to our diagram, I go one third of the way up L and the blue dot now is the center of mass. So that's the quick discussion of center of mass. Um, like I said, it can be done with integration and I'll show you that trick in a worked problem. So yeah, new stuff. Yay.